Imagine if high school students could learn about the automation technology that fuels the largest economy in the world. Imagine if their teachers had access to state-of-the-art professional development supporting this instruction. Imagine if a state-of-the-art laboratory provided remote access to critical technology for participation in collaborative problem solving. There's no borders on the internet. People all over the world need to start working in a network, you know, because people from India, people from China, they're, they're just like us and they have companies that need help or, you know, that want to help. And when we have problems working on their equipment or vice versa, you know, it's nice to have it so that we don't have to haul anybody around the world to help us. So basically it's instant help wherever you can get it. Mike Craker integrates this virtual environment approach with his students at Wilmer High School. Brandon and Ed are learning automation and motion control using collaborative problem-solving techniques. We both have strengths and weaknesses and we basically cover for each other, you know? I definitely am a fan of the trial and error thing where it's like, here's the stuff, here's a basic of how to do it, let's see what you can do with it. When Brandon and Ed run into a problem they can't solve, their teacher has an established connection with a virtual team expert. Automation and motion control, this is Ken. This is uh, Wilmer. We're uh, ready to look through the cap station. Okay, just a second. I've got you guys on camera here. I thought what we would do today is uh, go through what the overall uh, flow of that machine is in terms of its sequence. So we'll do that by uh, beginning with the human machine interface that you have in front of you there, Brandon. Dr. Ken so Ryan from the Center like for Automation and is, Motion Control, uh, located at Alexandria Technical and, uh, College, assists Brandon and Ed. Right, Ed. After he answers, he has uh, immediate access to the camera here, and he can see what we're doing. He has preset camera positions so he can look at us, look at the project, or look at the, uh, look at the laptops. And uh, he can control the laptops uh, through his remote access. Um, he can see what the logic, he can check the logic. He can see our human in machine interface. Basically, he has just as much access to the machine as we do right here. We have uh, a connection to the expertise of the instructors at Alex Tech. Um, I have a limited skill in this particular area and I've been learning over the years, but these guys have been working, this is their life work, and they have some tremendous things going on at their school there. Uh, my students are able to tap in to some of that knowledge as they work with them through the internet. Dr. Ryan shares his expertise through weekly interactive, web-based professional development classes for the high school teachers involved in the remote automation management program. Exactly. So now if you hit the start button at this point, you're going to find out that nothing happened. You can Jeff Miller, an industrial technology teacher at Owatonna High School, is one of his students. When you teach technology, everybody knows that uh, technology is rapid, so it's changing all the time. And you know, for me, um, good learning always happens when um, what you're trying to teach and what they're trying to learn is in context and it's relevant and it's authentic. And so when I can be in this office, you know, 10 feet from my desk, and I can have access to one of the, I consider, you know, one of the best programs in the country, and certainly one of the uh, probably most innovative instructors. That's just absolutely huge for not only for myself, but for the students here. It's a big deal. Jeff Miller at Owatonna High School is able to use his professional development learning to offer his students the fundamental skills they need to begin an automation project. And so you can see we have two true statements. And what I'm going to do is advance this to the next step. Yeah, right there. Can you see the valve for A? For cylinder A, can you point specifically to it? There it is right there. Now there should be a little light, there should be a solenoid light that should go on if that is actually active. Dr. Ken Ryan says there's a need to have some underlying okay, structure to this type of learning okay, process. So, uh, if the social networking skills that are brought uh, in combination with the technology that we're applying to emerging problems is very important. 
we see Ed and Brandon working down in Wilmer on technology that may be relatively new to them, but because they have access to subject matter experts remotely and know how to properly okay. leverage okay. that well, technology, so we they can a solve a problem that if left on their own, That's they couldn't do. But they really have to have those communication skills that we see them using. It could be blockage of the air supply to the cylinder. They have to be able to effectively ask questions. They have to be able to listen to answers. They have to know what direction that they want to go with the problem. So that whole blending of what technology they have to apply to what problem and then what social networking skills are they using to weave that all together. Those are going to be key points in, in how we move forward in the workforce of tomorrow. Getting the basics from Jeff Miller allows his student to go online with the Center for Automation and Motion Control for a more advanced capstone experience. As project sponsor, the center maintains expensive advanced automation platforms which the secondary partner could not afford and cannot support. CAMC, this is Jeremy. Hi, this is Josh in Owatonna and I'm working with your MAS cap station and I am having a problem. Okay, any sort of idea what... Advanced automation students at the center receive fellowships to act as mentors to the high school students during collaborative troubleshooting sessions. The remote automation management project allows us to produce a collaboratory between yeah, Minnesota high school the students, assistance. their teachers, and our command central here uh, at the uh, college in the Center for Automation and Motion Control so we can help those students learn about advanced automation technology. They're able to come in over the internet and uh, solve problems in collaboration with a uh, technician that's All at right. the command center. Yep, the light came on. Yep, that's good. All right. So Josh, why don't you go ahead and from your operator interface, run that through a couple times just so we make sure it's working while we still have Charles on the phone. All right, uh, the problem seems to be fixed. It's working now. They can almost be self-directed in a sense. Um, they know that when they encounter a problem, the they can get on, get and, on the uh, bat phone and, and talk to somebody and it's going to give them an answer. I just have to be the, the guy who holds the key and creates the possibility uh, for them to really explore on their own, be in charge of their own learning, which is the whole point. Imagine if technology educators could receive interactive, web-based, just-in-time instruction to pass on to their students. Imagine if students could collaborate online to design a solution to a problem. Imagine if all of the needed tools were at their digital fingertips. Imagine if subject matter experts from around the globe were available for consultation. Imagination becomes innovation with the vision of the Remote Automation Management Project.